station engines and steam. This is a video about a few model steam engines that I've rebuilt or repaired running on live steam. So while I'm waiting for the boiler to raise steam, it's time to go around the engine and apply some oil. And in no time at all, off it goes. If you listen as it starts running, you can hear like a tapping noise. And that's because there is some water in the cylinder and I haven't opened the drain cocks, but it clears soon enough. I know I've just oiled up the engine, but I'm putting some more oil on because I'm going to run the engine very fast. This engine has a tiny bit of play on the small end on the crosshead, so it does occasionally make a tapping noise, but it's nothing. I'll fix it when I get round to it. And it's certainly not worth making a video about. Look at the speed of the engine now. It really is going quite fast. And the reason for this is to try and get some water in the condenser so I can demonstrate emptying it. And here we go. Yes, that's working fine. The back pressure of the engine's exhaust is pumping the water out of the condenser into this suitable receptacle. It's much better now. All the water and steam and oil is not going down the back of the bench, and I suppose I could even run this on the kitchen table. Although being sensible just for a change, I don't recommend it. Running gas-fired boilers with inadequate ventilation can cause problems. I'm running this engine inside the workshop on the workbench but I'm not too far away from a very large, wide-open garage-type door. I still find it quite an exciting process after all these years playing with a coal-fired boiler. The smell is second to none, and it's really elemental. I mean, it's only sort of wood smoke and later coal smoke, but once you get the steam mixed with it and the steam oil, something really good happens. Especially when you have about 10 to 15 psi on the clock and you can open the steam blower, which blows a jet of steam up the chimney and draws the fire. And in no time at all you can run your steam engine. It's not quite as simple as that. I had to move the engine back and forth with the drain cocks open to get rid of the condensate, but I didn't show that because it's really messy. Or maybe I just forgot to press the record button. I do this a lot. I set up the shot, look at what I'm doing, and then I realise I haven't recorded it. It's because I'm either in repair steam engine mode or play with steam engine mode, not be a videographer mode. This is my weir type steam pump that's attached to the boiler and feeds the water in. Which is a very useful thing because you don't have to use the hand pump then. You just turn a tap to fill the boiler and turn it off to stop filling the boiler. Time now to check the fire. Yes, it's looking okay, but I think a bit of coal on will be a good idea. And I'll also rake the ashes out. You never want the ash pan to fill all the way up to the grate, because this will stop the air flow through the fire. I put this boiler plant together quite a while ago, and I included a system for getting rid of the ash. Normally you would just pull the ash out onto the baseboard, but it's very messy. I've got this neat collector that allows me to dispose of the ash. At this stage I put plenty of coal in the firebox. I wanted to drop the pressure to see how the engine would run at low pressure. And here it's running very happily at £20 per square inch. In case you're wondering why the whole assembly is rocking from side to side, it's not an optical illusion and you haven't taken too much medication. The reason that the engine and boiler are moving from side to side like this is because they're balanced. Well, not quite balanced, but they're on a large piece of wood across five Land Rover tyres that I have as a general purpose workbench outside the workshop. And the reason for this is, if my wife backs her car into a workbench outside the workshop, it will do a lot of damage to both. If she backs a car into the Land Rover tyres, then there's minimal damage. Just have a look and listen at this engine and see how sweetly it runs. I don't know how old it is, but it's pretty old. Let the steam test commence. I'm lighting the boiler with my flexible gas lighter, which keeps my hand out of the line of fire of the small explosion that occurs when you light a gas burner. These old Stuart 504 boilers are surprisingly efficient, and it doesn't take long before it starts to raise steam. There's nothing on the clock, but the steam's coming. As you can see when I press the whistle valve, 
it makes a bit of a whistly sort of a noise. So all I need to do now is let the pressure build. In this clip I'm testing the hand pump, although I will be using the injector for topping up the boiler, not the hand pump. I'll try the whistle again. About 20 psi now. It's time to let some steam to the engine, and of course the first steam will condense the water, and look what's happening. This is a very, very good sign. Can you see it rocking and bouncing back and forth at both ends of the stroke? That is a really good sign that the valve timing is perfect. But the engine won't turn over because there's a hydraulic lock in the cylinder, which is caused by the first steam that reaches the cylinder immediately condensing to water. So if you're playing with your own model steam engine and this happens, do not try and force the piston over top dead center. You need to clear the hydraulic lock. And that's what cylinder drain cocks are for. Watch this. Common sense warning, do not stand in front of the engine when you do this, otherwise you will get a mixture of hot water, steam and steam oil all down your shirt. I could shut the drain cocks when the engine is running, but for the purposes of the video I'm just showing that here I am shutting the drain cocks. I'm just giving the engine cylinder a quick wipe with a cloth to get rid of any oil. And now when I open the steam valve once again, this time the engine will go all the way around. But I've just noticed that there's quite a lot of oil on the flywheel. Really, I should have put drain cocks on this, which allow me to pipe away the condensate. But I like a bit of mess in my life, so I'm just going to leave these as they are. By opening the steam valve a bit further, I can make the engine go quite fast. And I'm doing this just to warm it up, because it needs to be thoroughly warm to avoid any possibility of a hydraulic lock problem. The power of this engine really is surprising. Although the cylinder bore is only one and a half inches in diameter, the amount of power at the flywheel is quite astonishing. And according to the gauge on the boiler, the pressure is only around 20 pounds per square inch. Right, that's enough messing with drain cocks. It's time to see whether this steam engine is powerful enough to generate any electricity. So I need to fit this belt. This is a belt that I really made in a rush because I was quite excited to see whether it worked and I didn't line it up properly, that's why it's very wobbly. I'm going to make a better version of this, which is accurately stuck together. But I'll live with this for the moment. The first thing I notice is the noise from the generator is not really excessive. It's not silent, I never thought it would be, but it's not making a horrible whining noise. I've just realized that after the last steam test, I never emptied the condenser. So the condenser will be quite full and that's why it's making a very strange exhaust noise. So all I need to do now is open the condensate drain valve on the condenser to drain the water into a bucket on the floor that you can't see. The main problem is that the pressure is still low on the boiler, it's at about 25 psi now, and the steam is very wet. Even though it's going through a steam dryer, it's still low pressure steam and low pressure steam is at a lower temperature. And this is the last episode of what started out as building a 504 boiler plant, but went a bit further than that. Although I haven't finished with the generator yet, but for the moment, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.